When we were planting our pond lilies, uh, I had made a new grater box. That's my old one. It's probably 20 some years old. See these handles? They're gone from sitting on wet earth. It's over 20 years old. Uh, that is the second one I think I made. You need to use salt treated wood, which is what this is. <clears throat> And you'd need, this is made for a larger wheelbarrow that we have at the river. And you know the wheelbarrows are curved, so you can't do much about the corners. But if you get this over here, and if you want to, you can shorten that up a little bit. You will only have a small corner where soil could drip down. I generally do it right outside of my uh, compost bin. And at the end, I just take a shovel and shovel up what little bit would fall out of the edges and throw it back in the compost pile. <clears throat> We have always, that one right there is made out of a quarter inch, and that's the grid. And the one I made at the river was, uh, I used half inch grid. They also make a three eighths. What you need is two eight foot two by fours. One you cut in half, which will make it four feet long. If you want a handle on the end, which is just easier to move it around because you're not grabbing a whole 2x4, you're just grabbing a handle, and you need to just cut it out. I leave about an inch. You can leave an inch and a half. It doesn't matter. And you need to cut this out with a saw, and you don't need a compass or anything to make that little arc. And the arc is stronger than if you just notched it up here because you have uh, the strength is is across this surface face here rather than that hard 90 corner hard 90 corner it could split right there but if you do this like that it relieves that pressure and you could just get a can and put it there and mark it around then you just cut that out and i sanded this or graded this down with a uh a cutting knife on wood a spoke shaver just so it's not you're not gripping a hard edge and it's round and you just cut this out and then you measure the distance across your wheelbarrow and this particular wheelbarrow is 27 and one half inches from the outside edge to the outside edge well on the bottom of this box is a two by two saw treated and you'll need two of those and if you want that box to sit in the middle of your wheelbarrow sides, you have to take off one and a half inches. That would be three quarters of an inch on each side. And then that box would be like that. It would be sitting on the edge on both sides. And see, with that sitting on the edge, that's how big your little corner is. That stuff could spill out. But most of your work is going to be done right there. You could use 3 8 if you want. Uh, I might find that this makes it too coarse. But what I did at the river with this box, it saved a lot of time and a lot of arm effort of trying to make this. So on this particular wheelbarrow, since it's 27 and a half off, less the width of one of these, that means it's 26. You would cut this one and that one 26 inches long. The handle is five inches. I've drawn out a little diagram here. But five inches, put a mark, square it up. You want to make it square and not catty corner. And put three deck screws in here. Since this is an inch and a half, you'd need at least a two and a half inch screw because a two and a half inch screw would go into that mark. A three inch screw would be even better. They just cost a little more. And it would take 12 to put this on. And then we cover the bottom after we, I'll flip this over in a minute. After you make this box, you flip it over and you put the wire on the outside of the box. <clears throat> and I staple it in with stainless steel staples, but you don't need to have stainless steel staples. I just had some. They are very expensive compared to a regular one. And then, uh, you just staple it in to hold it in place, and then you cut a length of this to go across this end, and a length in the middle, 
and you attach it with deck screws and they every four inches now you would start at about an inch and then every four inches to the end same way this way and you have to watch where these screws are because if you're running a screw down into here, you don't want to hit that screw. Now, three inch might get to there, two and a half would get to there. There's not as much pressure on that as there would be up here. Before I turn this over, you wouldn't be able to see this joint once it's turned over because it would be blocked by that board. But when you put this board across the face down here at the bottom and one that way, you want the end to be end grain to be there like that rather than this way because then you're going to put one this way and if you put this one over top and go down through here and pre-drill these so they won't split it will reinforce this joint and then when you put the next one in here up against it see it will just hold the wire down but this way it makes this joint stronger rather than have it this way. See, if you had it that way, and you put one in here like this is, there's no strength there. So you want to do it that way. And the end grain, see the end grain is like that? If you put a screw this way through here, it, will split, it can split it. If you put a screw through from this side, and pre-drill this hole for the screw it will go through and hold for a long time and will never split so you really have to watch about the end grains it isn't it isn't as critical on the 2x4 as it is on these now flip it over now you've made your box you've cut your handles out you've attached the box to the two center pieces and now you and it's square then you lay your wire on top of this and you cut it so the wire does not come out beyond here or it will scratch your legs and tear your clothes and cut your hands. So you want to make sure that it's smaller than the opening. It doesn't have to be but a little bit, a quarter of an inch, anything so that it won't come out the edge of this wood. And then you just put the screen on it and you staple it in place trying to get it as flat as possible. It will bow after a while just from the weight of uh, screening stuff. And then after that, you mark about an inch from the end and you try to put it on an angle so it won't hit those screws. And then every four inches, it's a, uh, I'll put a list of all the numbers of screws. You could use two and a half inch tech screws on this and not a, instead of three but three would make it stronger and it'll last a long time if you kept this inside of a building it would last until you wore that wire out which would be a long time and that's pretty much it and it's fairly lightweight i mean that's one-handed and generally speaking <clears throat> for the last couple of weeks since i made this it's just been sitting right there and I need to get it off the ground because the moisture will weep up in it. And this is a worn out wheelbarrow. And I'm going to make a video on how to make those out of a 2x4. Because if you ever bought one of those things, you'll realize how expensive it is. You can almost buy a new wheelbarrow for the price of those two pieces of wood. And see, it definitely needs work. What you need are two salt treated 2x4s, 8 feet long. One will be used for the side. You'll use that complete board, cut it in the middle, and then you will need two two by two salt treated. And you won't. You'll use all of one. Well, you'll have to cut them both probably to get these because these are about 30 inches each. And then you're going to need a minimum of 72 or 78, excuse me, deck screws. Two and a half will get you by. Three will work better. Uh, three would work better where the handle is in the main frame You could get away with the two and a halfs holding these in because they're every four inches and that will hold that wire really tight And since the wire is galvanized it won't rust And I need to make some more potting soil and I did uh, Three or four videos on how I make potting soil. I use my compost sifted. I add pro mix to it Which is just a general purpose uh, growing medium it's a lot of sphagnum moss in it and uh, I mix it up 
about half and half depends on the soil if your soil is fairly wet and damp like that is you might use a little bit less of it excuse me a little bit more of it if it's dry you would go half and half and it makes really a good potting soil and basically your compost is inert occasionally you'll get a seed come up because you can see where a few little seeds have come up but this has been exposed for months and then that's inert it's not going to have any uh, weed seeds in it 